mates and welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. Well probably been 10 days or so since we posted, probably closer to a fortnight and um, oh we had a busy time, yeah, nothing exciting has happened really apart from um, my nephew Phil, um, he had an accident oh, about May last year and he, um, he had a road bike, a road motorbike that um, he'd had an accident in way early in the piece and He'd had it under his house for a couple of years, and he got it going. And um, just out in the back paddock, um, yeah, he took it for a run up and a run back, and give it a bit of a squirt. And he wasn't going fast, but he fell off without a helmet on, and yeah, he got himself a, a brain injury. It, it, well, it, he didn't look real good for a long time, but he, he's, he's coming bloody good now. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show what can happen in a. Uh, just in a moment, so um, he's a bit lucky. He works for one of the mines, and and they've um, they've kept his employment, even though they don't have to pay him because he has a has insurance. Um, they, they've kept his position open for when he comes good. But um, just recently, he's got his license back um, after six months, probably, and he's got his license back. So um, they come down to visit us last weekend, which was great. Yeah, we we always get on really well. And um, so yeah, we had a barbecue, and um, oh, we I cooked for probably I don't know 13, 14 adults and a few kids, and we, we had a great get together in the barbecue. But yeah, we didn't do much in the shed. I serviced, I serviced my Triton, and serviced Judy's Yaris, and serviced Adele's little um, Ford Fiesta. So we got the car service and out of the way. Now I've got the John Deere off the hoist, and um, but yeah, it was a great weekend. Um, Good, good to see people, and we invited people that we'd been camping with before his accident, and you know, just they were always wondering how he was going. So, yeah, they got to have a yarn and and um, have a beer and a cook up. Um, but with a brain injury, um, he can't have a beer or alcohol for two years. So, um, yeah, Phil and myself we used to sit and have we'd have quite a few together and um, have a bit of a yarn. And, oh, bullshit on a bit, you know, <laughs> what blokes do. But um, yeah, he's, he's always been a good bloke, and, and he's got a good missus, and um, yeah, she's she's helped him out a lot. So, um, but it's just a bit of a reminder um, when you when you talk to Phil that um, what can happen it, it can happen so quickly, and um, it's life changing when something like that happens. But but anyway, I suppose we all get a bit comfortable with where we are, and you you think oh, I won't put the helmet on, I won't put the safety glasses on, I won't do the um, you know, well, I'm known up here for working in my thongs. So, so yeah, you, you get a bit complacent, and that's how people go, and sometimes that's how things happen. But um, anyway, he's coming good, and um, yeah, there's a good prospect of him getting back to work and all that. But um, yeah, it was certainly an eye opener to me to what can happen. Um, yeah, one day you, you, you're at work, you're playing with the kids out in the backyard, you you know, having a bit of a barbecue, a bit of a cook up with your family and next day the helicopters are coming in and they're flying you um, six hours to Brisbane or ten hours to Brisbane, however long Blackwater is from Brisbane. And so so anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a reminder but um, I, do, I wear safety glasses a bit but not nowhere near as much as I should and um, <laughs> if you have a bit of a look here See just in there, got a bit of a black eye happening. Now I've been telling everyone it was the missus. <laughs> um, and I've been getting away with that and most of them reckon I deserve whatever I got. But anyway, nasty buggers, eh? <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I got a bit of a shiner the other day. And what was happening was, you know, your, your little ratchet straps, you, you got your little ratchet tie downs for the back of the ute. and. Um, and they've got the, the little safety hook on them, you know, a hook with a little latch. So if, the, if it comes slack, it won't drop off your tie rail. Well, I had one of them in the back of the ute, and I, I wanted to get it out. And I hadn't wrapped it up properly last time, which is pretty common. <laughs> and, um, anyway, the hook got caught. So it was just sort of under something. So I give it a bit of a flick, and it flicked and <laughs> cracked right in my eye. And um, anyway, not to worry. <laughs> I got my ratchet strap and kept on going, yeah, but um, yeah, at the time I could feel it a bit puffy and, and oh, I barely broke the skin, yeah, just a bit of a, 
bit of a crack sort of thing and nothing serious. Um, not enough to go and sit down or anything, just to wipe her off and keep going. But anyway, the colour's come out now, so saves me a hell of a lot of makeup, eh? Yeah, I've got to match this side now, be right, yeah. But, um, but anyway, what's been happening in Bundy Bear's shed? Well, look, not an awful lot. Um, I've been doing the front nose cone, panel beating the front nose cone on the John Deere 420, and it's a long job. I've done 13 weld repairs on the front of it because these old farm tractors, once they get to a stage where they're not loved much anymore, well, anything goes. Yeah, so um, I've, I've got all the welding done and a coat of primer on it, and where any of the dints were, I've hammer finished them as best I could, but to tell you the truth, I'm not that much of a bloody panel beater. <laughs> um, uh, there's, uh, I've, so far I've got it reasonably straight with no bog at all in it. And um, down, down on the bottom section, um, you can see a few ripples that I'll, I'll probably have to um, hammer a little bit lower and I'll probably have to put a swiper filler across that. But I, I try not to use the bog if I can. So, um, so I've, I've spent a couple of days solid on that. And it's, there's not much to look at for a video. It's bloody boring and look and work. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, just a patch here and a tap and a sand. And, and you seem to have to do a, a lot of hours for not much um, reward or not much satisfaction in what you can see you've done. But So anyway, we, we've done that. Um, the, my old rider mower, um, it blew a belt. It's a Toro rider mower. And... Um, it blew a belt, and um, yeah, I've, I've got to fix the deck today. I was going to keep it for the rough areas up around the shed, and then um, I bought a new John Deere, a D110 for Judy. So um, probably today, sometime, I'll have to get the deck out of the other one. And I think some of the um, some of the pulleys are a bit crook, and yeah, just worn. I, I always keep spare pulleys up on my wall here in my spare parts, you know, and a spare belt and things like that. So. Um, I'll probably try and get the old girl going today sometime. It'll give me a break from the sandy. But another job we're doing on the John Deere is we've been making a step. Um, because the first step to hop onto the John Deere is over a metre off the ground, um, I've decided to put a step halfway. So, so what I've made is a, it's a little L bracket. Um, it's, we've got holes underneath, so when the, the, what the setup is, is this goes onto the tractor we've got a proper John Deere foot plate then we have these bolts cuphead bolts and the cuphead bolts they come down through the holes and that gives us a nice a nice step so I think in doing that to mount the um, to mount this there's a hole in the center of the gearbox where a shaft goes through for a mid mounted implement so um, I've got a piece of inch and a half shaft and I've, I've stepped it down so the inch and a half shaft will poke through here and be welded in and on the other side of the tractor um, the other end on the other side will drill and tap that to 5 16th UNC um, which is the bolt I have handy and um, we'll put a, a heavy washer over on the other side and that'll hold it in that way but because it's on a shaft we do have to stop it going, turning this way. So um, the, there's a bolt just ahead of this where an implement mounts. So we'll probably just do a bit of flat and drill a hole in it and just bring it down just as a just as a bracket to make it stable. So so we might get a bit of film of, of that. Um, I've got it in the lathe. I've, I've put a centre in it. I've started drilling, and um, yeah, that was yesterday. But I've got the camera up here today, so we'll. We'll have a bit of a look at that. Another thing for the John Deere is this PDO cover. Now, it didn't have a PDO cover on it, and I've looked and looked in Australia and could not find one. So, anyway, I got into a fellow in the States, Ryan, and, and he had one for $175. So, that's US. So, um, yeah, that's the one. I think I told you about this one last week or last last stew but um yeah i finally got it over here it's a nice cast piece it's it's got all the all the proper john d numbers on it and all that so it's a genuine item 
175 US and by the time we got it to Australia and we paid um, we paid freight then we had to pay our exchange rate was only sitting at 68 cents in the dollar and, and um, by the time we paid the exchange rate then the then the companies take fees out and all that so it was 345 dollars which is it's bloody expensive but anyway you, you have a decision whether you'd like to do it or not but um, but what that's brought forward though is in the bottom of it here it has a drain hole and the drain hole is so when it sits there any moisture any rain or whatever that goes in there instead of building up in this area here it drains out so the bolt that mounts that is down here so when you look at the back of the tractor and you get the hole low all right, the bolt has to be here well it so happened that I hadn't realised before that the hole to mount this on my tractor is up the top so at some stage someone's repaired the PDO and it must be possible to put the PDO housing around or put it back in the wrong position so um, I'll probably pull that off and I'll turn it around to the correct position but in doing that I've noticed one of the little, little eyes where the bolt holes are um, to hold it on um, one of them's cracked out and the, the cast piece is missing um, where, where it was tucked in the corner before you couldn't really see it so, so I'll, I'll probably deal with that in one way or another um, no, I haven't, haven't had a good look and made a plan for that yet so we'll just see how that goes but, um, but anyway look that's about it for our little chat I'll t do a bit of filming on what we're up to for the day and probably running the thread up the end of the shaft for the step and We'll sit the step in place. I won't paint it today. Um, I'll get it ready for paint and you know, probably sand it all back and, and buff it back and put a bit of primer on so um, the rust doesn't get into it. And just having that step finished, that'll be another, another big thing. I also got some cushions in for the seat through the week. Um, but the seat frame's quite ratty, so I'll need to deal with that too. So. Um, I had a look and I bought the I bought the tractor March last year. I thought it was May, but March last year. So I've been working on it reasonably constant for um, well from March last year till now, so about ten months. So um, well, we'll just see. See if by March this year we get it finished. That'll be a whole year project, and um, yeah, put a lot of work into the old girl. And it's starting to look nice, but um, I, I've got to pay particular care in doing the panels because. When you walk up to a machine or a panel or a tractor, you, you just look at the overall thing, and if you can see wrinkles in the panel, well, it looks rubbish. So I'll do that the best I can. Um, if if the best I can do isn't good enough, well, I'll probably pay someone. But we'll give it a red hot shot first, and um, and try and get on top of it. I've done a few in the past that have come out pretty good. So um, yeah, we'll we'll battle along with that. So anyway, stay tuned. Um, oh shift the camera around try and make it a bit interesting and first up I think we'll sneak over to the lathe and, um, and knock that thread up the end of that piece of shaft well, this is the PDR at the back of the tractor and this is where this this bracket goes and with the hole down there's a hole here with it down to the bottom this mounting bolt should be down here not up here so <coughs> It looks like, um, right up in, in the back here, that I haven't particularly noticed before, there's a little lug broken off. So what we'll have to do is undo the bolts here and we'll have to turn this around um, so the bolt's down low and yeah, then it should look something like that. So, so that's what I was talking about before with the, with the bolt in the wrong place. So if we try and, I'll see if we can just zoom in and Yeah, in here, right in there you can see a shadow and that's where there's a whole ear broken off it. So anyway, we'll, we'll have to deal with that and um, yeah, try and pull that housing off and turn it and we'll put a new PDO seal like in the, in the back here, we'll put a new seal there and tidy this shaft up and, and then we'll cover it all up. But that, that just makes it safer so if we're at a, at a show or a rally um, and the PDA gets bumped into gear it's, it's not dangerous so 
anyway, so that'll, that'll probably be a bit of film in one day, but maybe not today, but something we have to do. Well, now that's the nose cone I've been working on. The, um, mostly around the edge. Mostly around the edges, um, there are little rust holes in through here and down the bottom. Down the bottom are still dints and when you have a close up look at it, you can see, um, I'll see if we can, yeah, you can see across the top there, there's a little wrinkle still, well that might even just be a dry patch, but down the bottom there it's quite lumpy. So, yeah, just a little bit lumpy anyway. And that section down the middle, this this piece there, that's um that's pretty good now. Um, at the top there, there's a badge, and where those holes are, and that's looking okay. So anyway, we'll we'll work away with that over the next few days. I've I've been doing that for a few days now, and I'm nearly nearly <laughs> nearly a bit sick of doing it actually. But um, and in the background. You can see the difference in the size of the tractors. Like the, the one on the right is obviously the John Deere 420. Um, and the little gold one next to it, little Fergie, that's a Fergie 35 grain gold petrol. So the little tractor has more horsepower. The Fergie has more horsepower than this one. But um, yeah, it's just, oh, just how it goes. Actually, no, nah, they'd be close. Yeah. But anyway, that's. Um, that's what I've been doing with that. I'll, uh, yeah, it's coming up okay, but on the bonnet, there's a couple of holes we have to fix yet, so that'll take a while too. So, but anyway, that's um, yeah, we'll take you over to the lathe, I think. Well, all we're doing here is we have a five eight, and see if that'll focus on that for us. Five eight UNF bolt, or UNC, I'm sorry, bolt. So uh, we've got to just tap a thread up the end of the shaft for the um, for the step on the John Deere. So we'll just drop a bit of a hole. I've already started on it. We'll just make them a bit deeper, and we'll do a um, do a bit of a run. And deep, so we got plenty of room for the for the tap to get down there. We'll go up the tap and drill size now and um, I'll sneak off and find it. Right, um, tapping drill for 5811 or 58 UNC is 13 and a half millimetres. So um, I'm going to make this one actually 14 millimetres, um, mainly because that's the size drill I have. and. The job it's doing, it's not like holding a space shuttle together, it's holding a little step on the John Deere. So we'll rock and roll and get that happening. <laughs>
it feels like it's bottomed out. find a tap and we'll stick a tap in the chuck and just let it feed in and just nice and slow with lots of lubricant and we'll see what well would you believe I can remember buggering up my 5.8 UNC tap um, I'd bluntened it up and, and um, getting cleaning up some holes actually some really rusty holes and it just got really blunt and buggered so um, and got a bit of a gap in it so I actually threw it out and I haven't got myself a new one yet. All I have is this. This was a broken one that we we um, tidied up one time just to get a job finished. So look, what we'll do, we'll whack a heap of lube on. We'll just go slow and we'll see if this does the job. It may or it may not. Good, Seems to be working more arse than Jesse the elephant, I think. But anyway, if it's working, we're not going to complain. Oh, that's gone tight on me now. Anyway. clean out I think but yeah I think we're having a win right against all odds our threads worked out it goes in nice and deep it's 10 millimeters from the head to the start of the shaft or the start of the thread so that's a good thing now what I'll have to do is make a washer up and on that washer We'll, um, yeah, that'll, that'll hold the step right into the tractor. But the, the thread's a nice fit, you just need a spanner. Comes a bit looser out here, a bit where we've gone in and out a few more times. So that's all right. <laughs> Believe it or not, that was done with that busted ass looking thing. And it still seemed to work okay and it cut the thread nicely. And <laughs> yeah. I don't know, that's the one I should have been cleaning my bolt holes with, I'd imagine. But anyway, all's good. 
Well, I found a bit of metal in the scrap tin. I'll just give it a quick tidy up. And what this is going to be is a washer. And this bolt will actually go through the washer and that'll give us a nice big surface area out the other side um, to hold the step in once it's welded. So we'll do a few runs. I need it a little bit smaller. Um, Accuracy is not important with this. It's just a, a pretty agricultural thing. And I'll we'll just skim it down probably a quarter of an inch and see how we go. finished there. Yeah, I'll do a few more runs. My girl be doing This will slow her up a bit. a bit heavy for this little lathe, but anyway, we're here to play, aren't we? We'll put a bit of cutting spray on it. Okay, I'll have a bit of a measure and um, we'll take that over to the tractor and just see if it's going to fit. Right, we'll actually put a centre in here. A bit of lube. that happen? I forgot to bolt the tailstock down. Right, doing this centre, 
as you saw, I just broke the end of my centre drill up here. Well, why did that happen? Well, main reason is I started drilling and I hadn't locked my tailstock and the tailstock just kicked a little bit. Being a light lathe, um, I had the tailstock quite loose and it, and it just sort of it just kicked across a little bit. And, um, and that was it. So that's what you get for machine and with your brain in neutral. <laughs> anyway, I've got the broken bit out, bit out now. Wasn't a big deal. But anyway, yeah, just something silly that shouldn't happen, but you get um, you get rattling along with your job and yeah, and probably not paying as much attention as you should be, and um, yeah, that's what happens. So I'll have another go. Just bought a 5 8 clearance hole up the centre of the washer there. So this fella can go in there. I'll probably put a recess in there to countersink the head just a little bit. Um, and that's mainly for looks, no other reason. And we'll probably drop it a bit of a 45 on the corner here just to um, yeah, break the edge really. But yeah, we'll probably have it like a quarter of an inch thick. But anyway, we'll, we're heading along. It's bloody it's starting to look alright. Might put a little bit of angle on there, just a poof deep. That's a metric poof deep in Australia. We don't have imperial ones out here. There's room for a socket, so we'll just work with that one measurement and I'll stop picking that up before it cuts my finger. and make it look a bit nicer. And you can still get a socket or a spanner around it. You'll be able to undo it with a spanner, you won't need a socket, but it'll just look a bit more a bit more factory is the illusion we're going for. Right, we'll just 
Let's break his head here. set him up and part him off and should be flash. Right, you might remember this parting tool. This is the block that we actually um, machined up in the mill and this is our first use of it. So it's a nice deep one. We'll lock everything up. And we'll have a bit of a feed and see what happens. Like a bit of this. That's that worth cool cut. speed it all up a little bit. see if it's all going to work for us. Now this pivot in here, that goes right through to the other side and what that does is when you have an implement mounted inside here, an underbelly implement that, that sits in through here, um, that's a pivot for it. So with making the washer we're going to put a seat bracket, uh, sorry a step bracket there. So the idea is to use that and that's that washer we just finished. So that's this side of it, and that, this washer will hold it hard across this way, and against that nice thick washer, it should give it good support. So I'll take you around the other side, and I'll show you what the story is there. Okay, this is the other end of that shaft, and the big washer's over the back there, and the idea is for this step here, it will actually sit on there, Up against the shoulder in here, it'll be welded inside, it'll be welded all around here, and that will give us a step to hop up and down on the tractor on. Now if I go out a little bit, that will give you an idea of the setup. But in doing that, in, in having this step here, 
on a pivot, well, of course, we're going to have this happen. And the other idea that I spoke about earlier was to... There's, there's an implement mounting bolt here. And so with the implement mounting bolt taken off, or the nut taken off, we can actually put a piece of steel down behind it and just weld a little bracket and that will that will make it secure forwards and backwards and it, and it won't look too dicky. So, so that's the plan at this stage anyway. We'll, we'll work away with that and see if we can find something to do it with nice and tidy and I'd, I'd say the next thing is we'll mig all this up, mig him up in there and I'm going to leave the outside edge flat um, and it, we're only going to weld inside on this edge here so that this step can pull hard up against the piece in the housing there. And anyway, we'll go away and do that. Well, that's the step. That's this side. We still have to put the strap in. But one thing I didn't tell you before is when I put the, the little dimple in the washer, it was to match these ones. There's two here where the implement mounts and they all have a little dimple in them. So if you hang on, I'll put you around the other side and I'll show That's you. the washer we made. And just further forward of that, that's the implement mount. With the sunken washers. The washer on here isn't sunken as far, the one we made, but it's still along the general guideline, so it all looks like it fits in okay. Oh well, now to make the strap. Well, there you go, that's the back of the step. Just did a bit of a vertical down with the MIG, just to put the strap on. And that should stop it from moving around, so that doesn't look too bad. I'll take you around the other side. And that's the finished step. Bring it around there so you can see the side view. That's nice and sturdy. It's a proper John Deere mount. So anyway, we might call that a wrap. We'll catch you all later, right? Eh?